Now, if we think back to our first crush or first interest, maybe it's grade school, maybe for some of us it was middle school, odds are it was someone you sat next to, someone you took class with, you saw over and over and over again, and that's nature doing its work, doing its job, as Johnny was saying. As we see faces that become familiar over time, we naturally gravitate, become more interested, like them more, become attracted to them because they're safe. They're part of our tribe. It's hardwired into our survival to be wary of new people. But if we see the same familiar faces over and over again, we naturally start to warm to them. So using propinquity is actually one of the easiest ways we can start to increase our likability online or in person. And the science is clear on this, right, Michael? Well, the science is really interesting around this, actually, not just uh, not just clear. It's 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 actually I was very surprised when I read about this. Um, there is something that's called the mere exposure effect, which is kind of the the base version of propinquity. So um, Dr. Amy Gordon writes about this in Psychology Today in an article that's titled The Role of Familiarity in Attraction. And she describes the mere exposure effect or how this has been tested in, in the lab. When you present participants with random stimuli, this can be a symbol, a shape, a picture, just something. The more people see this, the more they start liking it. And this happens both consciously and subconsciously. So this might even happen with a song that the first time you hear it, you don't really like it that much, but it plays over, it's the summer hit, it plays over, it plays over, it plays over. And, and that just lends itself to us suddenly liking it because we're exposed to it so much. Fashion trends, same thing. First time you see this weird pair of pants, you're like, what is that? Hundredth time you see it, it's like, oh, you know, I, I like that stuff. And if we take this mere exposure effect and we bring it to uh, the, the human psyche, to, to human social interactions. Now it's called the propinquity effect. And there's a very famous uh, study, it's the dorm room study, where social psychologists found that the closer students live to each other in a dorm, the more likely they were to become friends. So in one study, 41% of people were friends with a person next door while less than 25% had a friend who was just a few doors down. And when someone was living at the end of their hall, the likelihood that they were friends was only 10%. Now, one, one more thing, and then I'll, I'll, I'll leave the, the science lab for, for a bit. One important thing to tag on to what Johnny was saying earlier as well is that this familiarity or this propinquity, um, it doesn't beat negative experiences. Just because you see your neighbor every single day of the week, if that if you don't like him, if that's a rude person, like propinquity doesn't save you, right? That's that's just going to backfire. And exactly what I was going to share. It's important to recognize that this is happening, but we can enhance or actually be detrimental to its effect. So we can enhance its effect by making eye contact, as Johnny said, acknowledging people, giving value, smiling, having great energy around the people that we're seeing in the elevator, in the hallway, our next door neighbor, our coworker that's the cubicle across from us, or the barista we see every day. But if we're AirPods in, looking at our phone, not acknowledging, not validating the people around us that we're seeing that we are building propinquity with, we're not going to have any of that likability effect that we just talked about. So it is important to recognize that this is a, a powerful driving force in nature that we can leverage to become more likable, but we have to be intentional with our actions and our nonverbal signals when we're in these situations with an opportunity to build familiarity. AJ, it brings up a, an interesting concept. So for our audience, I want you to think about the kind of world that you want to live in. And I was speaking to one of our clients about this and going out of our way for micro interactions, to say hello, to make sure that people see us smiling, to be at a conscious level that we're present and then making a connection with other people who are in, a, in that same conscious presence. Now, my question to you is, would you like to live in a world where no one says hello to each other? Or would you like to live in a world where everyone says hello to each other? Well, that's a, it's a very easy answer for myself because I've lived in places where everyone says hello, and I've lived in large cities where no one speaks to each other. 
And I can even here in, in Medellin, one of the reasons that I love it, and even though I don't speak the language, uh, Colombians are notably very friendly. And when you walk down the street and people say, hola, uh, uh, buenos dias. And, and it just, it warms my heart. It, may, it makes me feel welcome in a, in a place where I'm a stranger in a strange land. But it makes my day. And one of the things that I do every day, uh, in the mornings I go to the gym and there's a gym in the park. And it's a, it's a free gym. And I love working out outside every morning. And it's under the trees and there's tons of beautiful birds here. And I see the same guys every morning. Now, we don't speak the same language. In fact, Medellin is a very international city and there's quite a few people from all over the world in that gym. But propinquity showing itself that we are there every day, every morning, and it's the same guys. But here's another thing. What does going to the gym at 6.30 in the morning, in the park, uh, every day, say about you and your worldview or maybe interests or passion for being uh, for fitness? Well, all of those guys com- can share it. And because they are showing up at the same time every morning, there doesn't even need to be much said between us for us to feel comfortable and to feel at ease and have that commonality uh, with each other. And it blows my mind how we interact at that gym. And I'm doing my best uh, every day to learn the language and to push and force myself into these conversations. But that, that commonality and that propinquity allows for any any faults in, in my and in, in how little I speak the language, any mistakes that I make, where everyone just laughs, nods along, gives me a hand, helps me out, and and vice versa. It's and it's wonderful. 